All right. All right. One more to go. We are here and we have... God, I'm so sad. This is the final issue of Iron Jaw. The final one ever made. But I was correct because we do now have the origins of Iron Jaw. Sword, sorcery, and savagery beyond belief. Look, it's, I think that's probably, that's Iron Jaw, but this is like how he got his Iron Jaw. I don't know, let, let's see. A rain-drenched warrior eats a paltry meal of raw quail, beneath what little shelter the once great forests of North America now have to offer. Iron Jaw, well, we're in North America, I didn't know that, so that's cool. Iron Jaw, self-deposed king of the little civilization remaining on this war-ravaged planet, Earth, shivers in the twilight dampness and thinks. Thinks back to a time when he was a little more than a peaceful, contented minstrel living amongst a band of thieves, and the horrible nightmarish moment when they turned on him and who will forge a jaw of iron. Nice. Okay, so I, yeah, because I really wanted to know how he got I was hoping that they did this before the series ended so I'm, I'm I'm happy I'm happy let's do it what is the meaning of this I am a man of peace what crime have I committed what law have I broken does Tarlac know of this for if he does not you will pay with your lives Tarlac knows nothing singer nor will he ever for when we have finished with you there will be no one left to tell him of your fate the origins of Iron Jaw. Nice. Let's see. I got my water this time, so I. <coughs> oh fuck. That's ironic. I brought the water specifically so that I wouldn't cough. It makes me cough. I wonder what the fair maidens you lure so easily with your silken voice would think of you now. A helpless, quivering coward. Jealousy? Is that the reason for your madness? Surely there must be more. Indeed there is more. You have stolen from your fellow thieves. Thus defying the sacred code, the highest crime which can be committed by Tarlock's warriors. Smash! What is that? Oh, he smashed his own guitar against him. Far too long have you been our leader's favorite, even though you are mo no more than an adopted orphan. And far too long have you sought the affections of Carlotta, the woman long promised to me. Aye, not to mention all the other females you now have eyes only for you. <laughs> oh my god. Iron Jaw's a lady killer, man. This is a madness. Never have I sought the favors of a wench betrothed to another. If they have looked on me with pleasure eyes, it is merely because they enjoy my ballads. Ask them. I swear on the head of Tarlock the robber, my adopted father, I am innocent of your charges. Save your pleas for the gods, minstrel. Here and now they fall on deaf ears. We have judged you and found you guilty. Now utter your last words before I carry out your sentence. I am not a beggar, but I beg you now, please listen to reason. I am a man of peace. I have never harmed anyone in my life. Please show me mercy. Stop your spineless whining. The sentence will now be executed and you will never speak again. As you have lived by your accursed mouth, so shall you die by it. It is done. The womanizing minstrel will sing no more. Oh shit. What, they burned out his tongue? Nor need the fear that Tarlock will learn of his fate. Now our women once more will belong to us. Triumph is ours. Holy shit fucking burned his tongue off. I think that's what happened. Is he dead, Dektor? Have you ever known a man to live, Corlon, when he has had his chin and lower jaw sliced from his head? Oh, shit. Though he still breathes, it won't be for long. See how freely the blood flows from his wound? Within the hour, he will be no more. Then bait for the great birds of prey. Meanwhile, let him suffer until either death overtakes him or the birds pick the flesh from his still throbbing body. And there they left me alone. Helpless, bleeding to death. I cannot remember the pain where my senses were numbed by it. It shall never forget the vow I made as they rode into the distance. 
Oh, great machine, if you deem it wise that I survive this ordeal, grant me the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to repay these murderous cowards who put me here. If you so deem, I swear I will hunt them to the ends of the earth. Farewell, singer of songs that steal the hearts of maidens. They will doubtless mourn your disappearance, but soon they will forget and return to the real men. Soon I lapsed into unconsciousness, willing to accept whatever fate the great machine would decree. So I do not remember the events of the next several days, only what I was told of them by the beauteous Carlotta. Hurry, old man, he is gravely wounded if we do not move with great haste. It will be too late to save him. If he dies, then so shall Carlotta. Interesting, why? Are you guys connected somehow? Put him into the wagon and hurry. His wounds are so severe, so hideous, I cannot bear to look at them. If only I had dared to love him, but even that was not his fault. He never even suspected only Dector. My betrothed was suspicious of my true feelings, and this is the result. But now is not time for selfish soul searching. All that matters is that the minstrel be kept alive. Hurry, old man, I know your bones creak with age, but you must move faster. My arms are strong, my lady, but my legs are weak. I am doing my best. All is ready, my lady, and the minstrel still breathes. My God, look at him. He's all broken. No fucking jaw. But not for long unless we reach the cave of Sora and the sorceress. Only she has the power to spare his life. So make haste. Whip the wretched beast until it drops. Only make certain my beloved is still alive when we arrive at the sorceress's cave. Suddenly, without warning, the barbarian solemn's reverie is shattered by the sound of a breaking twig. That noise, there is something behind me. Yeah, I'm sure there is. It may have been nothing more than the wind, but in this strange land I dare not chance a surprise attack either by man or by beast. Oh, shit! Look at that fucking dragon! By all that is holy, in all my vast travels never have I encountered the likes of this. Somehow I must slay it, or surely it will devour me. Yeah, I don't... I don't... <laughs> I don't disagree. That thing looks fucking hungry. Look at that thing. God, it's beautiful. It's fucking beautiful, man. Ugh. I post that shit on the wall. It's an iguana, I think. His tongue. The creature uses it for combat. Slice it off, man! The deadly membrane is mammoth and swifter than firebolts from the sky. How can I hope to escape so awesome a fro, much less vanquish it? Perhaps I could outrun it, but no, I will not flee. Iron Jaw faces all foes. I must devise some method to deceive the beast and then destroy it. Perhaps I have the answer. It attacks only with its, its tongue, the thrust of which seems guided by sound rather than sight. Thus, if I can create a diversion with sound... It is a worthy chance, and perhaps my only one. What is he doing? Oh, he, he... Wait. Oh, he just... He just threw the cloak. I was right, it attacks what it hears. I must strike now before the monster realizes this ruse. Yeah! I knew it! I knew he got the fucking tongue! Look at that! Chop that shit right off. Then, with the speed born of desperation, a speed faster than ever was conceivable to 20th century man. Die, demon. <sighs> Brutal. Brutal. Praise be the great machine. Now to move in for the kill before the creature can recover from his wound and retaliate. But I must make my move from a safe distance. Thus, I must risk losing my sole weapon, my blade, by hurling it. Is he going to do it? Do you have good aim, motherfucker? Let my aim be true, lest I be left alone to face the beast without any kind of weapon. Of course it's going to be true. Straight in the fucking heart. On this day, fate sides with the barbarian and his blade strikes home. All these years traveling, fighting, facing challenge upon challenge, yet surely this was the ultimate test of my mettle as a warrior. Hours later, as night engulfs the dense forest in a cloak of ebony... What manner of, of man am I to eat the remains of a conquered foe merely to fill my aching belly? But why trouble myself with such trivial matters? The tongue, meat, is tasty and filling. In a strange land, to go without food is to weaken oneself, and that I cannot afford. Nor can I afford the ravages of fatigue. I must rest. 
With my belly now full, a good night's slumber should partially renew my strength. If indeed I can sleep and shut out the nightmares which have continually haunted me for so many years. Dreams filled with nothing but thoughts of revenge. But as sleep overtakes the weary warrior, inner peace refuses to join it, and once more he finds himself reliving the past. His wounds are terrible, probably even fatal. Still, for a price, I will do what I can. Ah, that's a, it's a wizard. Or a sorceress? Ah, this is most generous of you, Carlotta. You must love the wounded man deeply. Yours is not the question, old hag, but to do for which you are paid. Of course, my dear. I can make no promise, however. I will do what I can. Now leave me, for I can only work my magics in private. What do you mean? I have no intention of leaving his side, not until I am certain he will live. I paid your price. Now do your work and fear not. I will not steal your secrets. No! My spells are ineffective in the presence of others. If you wish me to spare his life, you must depart at once and come back tomorrow. Otherwise, he will surely die on the mat where he now lies. End very soon. Very, el very well, old woman. I will leave, but be warned. If that man dies, I will have you thrown to the bears in Tarlock's arena. Your threats merely waste precious time. Be gone with you. The adopted son of Tarlock himself, after all these many years in recluse, at last, the fates have granted me a chance to be reborn. What? A chance I dare not squander, for even a sorceress cannot live forever. Oh, I must somehow spare the minstrel's life, and the only possible means to such a miracle will be found in the books from the Ancient Ones. The Ancient Ones? Is that us? Are we the Ancient Ones? I think so. Then, hours later, medical textbook. The remedy has been revealed to me. I must think, digest what I have learned first. The minstrel must have fresh lamb's blood to replenish the blood he has lost. Nope, that's not a medical textbook. I don't know what the fuck that is. Then he must drink of a magic potion that I have never prepared before. I pray I have the vital ingredients, ground wings of the giant bats, the strange mold from the forbidden swamp, aged liver of the codfish. Yes, all of it is here. And when the ingredients are mixed, it is ready. Now, I must intone the secret incantation to transform earthly matter into a mystical serum. O oh, mighty spirits from above, my soul be pure and clean. You are my faith, my life, my hope. There is no greater machine. I ask the power and the strength to give all I can give. O oh, grant me this my lone request to let the minstrel live. There it is done. The rest is in the hands of the spirits. Now I must follow the orders put forward in the Book of the Ancients. First, the mortal must be administered the lamb's blood. He is badly wounded. He scarcely lives, and his mouth it has been cut away. But I must ignore the horror of his wounds, and somehow find his throat, that the blood may be forced into his veins. Well, you don't... Because you... Whatever, it doesn't matter. Much later, following this tedious, sickening task... The blood is now inside of him. Now it's the next task, binding his wounds with the healing potion. But to bind I will need rags, and I have none save for these enchanted threads which cover and preserve my aged rabid body. I cannot relinquish them for healing unless, of course, there is no other way. What the fuck? She's gonna get naked? I swore I would never do it again, to use such enchantment more than four times as the ultimate sin. Yet since I desire only to spare a life, perhaps the spirits will forgive me. But whether or not they do, it is a chance I must take even if I die for it. As the old sorceress's eyes close tightly, she emits a low, almost animalistic wail. Suddenly, a strong, frost-bitten wind whips through the vast cavern, extinguishing the candles within and casting throughout the room a veil of darkness. She tosses her fate into the blackness of the unknown and falls into a deep, deadly trance. Minutes, perhaps even hours, pass as the enchantress lies on the cold, dank cavern floor. Then, as mysteriously as it vanished, the light returns once more, revealing in the sorceress's place the sensuous figure of a beautiful young girl. And seconds later, the beauteous figure begins to rise, slowly, hesitatingly at first, then with rapidly increasing vitality. 
May the spirits be praised once again. Have they granted me success in the ritual of immortality? Even though I have exceeded the limit of four? How long it has been since I have tasted the sweet nectar of youth. How good it is to be beautiful, to move about with freedom from pain, to be truly reborn. You have violated the sacred law. Your cause was just. Thus, you have been granted youth once more, but at a price. No longer do you possess immortality. Only the power of sorcery remains yours. Okay, that's not so bad. The judgment of the spirits emblazoned in stone, but I should have expected as much. Five times have I escaped the ravages of old age, and I should be grateful. Still, I cannot but fear the moment when, after centuries of life, I shall at last know death. But I will not wallow in self-pity. I was granted this final rejuvenation that I might save the young minstrel's life. He must be healed, and heal him I will. Ah, the rags, which were my only clothing moments ago. No longer do I need them. Now they can be used for bandages? Why don't you need them anymore? Because you're hot now? And everybody likes looking at your boobs? I can be naked. I'm young. That's not how it works, lady. Well, I don't know. Maybe in this world. His wounds, though grave, will not be fatal. If it is the spirit's will, the spirits who permit me now to stand here in this form to complete my task. First, I must saturate these rags with the healing potion to fully absorb all the magical properties. There, the slow and tedious healing process begins. You will survive, and in time your strength will return. That is the solemn promise of Soran the Sorceress. Mm. This thing broken? But meanwhile, in the nearby camp of Tarlac the Robber... So, woman, you have heard of the minstrel's disappearance. Well, spare your tears, for they are wasted. Only one will never again be seen, in this camp, or any other. Several days later, in the cavern of Soran, So at last you awaken. That is a good omen. You have spent many hours in the land of darkness. I began to fear you would not return. No, you do not try to talk. It would be impossible even if your wounds were fully healed. Rest your muscles and your mind. My name is Sora, and I have been tending to you. I had to remove your skin garment to fashion this covering for myself. But when you are able to walk again, and will need clothes, I will hunt for new skins that you may wear. Wah! Oh shit, he's awake again. Daylight begins to filter through the trees, yet I feel as though I haven't slept at all. It must be the dream, the dream I cannot leave behind. For years I have tried to forget it, yet it continues ever to haunt me. But little wonder, with this accursed jaw of iron to constantly remind me. There is no way to flush from my mind the memory of those long agonizing months, when I was all but a prisoner in that cold, bone-chilling cave. So he was a prisoner. I can endure this no longer. I must go outside, must breathe the fresh, clean air, and bask in the warmth of the sun, hear the birds sing, and discover what lies beneath these rotting bandages. And so, in Soren's absence, I at last dared to leave my shelter and venture once more into the world. Ah, how warm the sun is. It opens my pores like a bath in the streaming springs. It makes me feel even stronger than before. I was attacked by Dector and his traitorous comrades. Aye, that is business to which I shall soon attend. But first, I must remove my bandages. I will do so at the next stream, or spring I come to, that I might look upon the damage rendered unto me by thy swine. Then, following a short walk, I know I was wounded grievously. My suffering was testament to that. But I must learn how extensive were the injuries, and there is no other way to know the truth save to gaze upon it. I would hardly wait for the last vestiges of cloth to be removed, hopeful that I was wounds were properly healed, only a few straps remain, and then BOOM! It seemed an eternity until at last the final round of cloth fell from my face, but I was hardly prepared for the soul-shattering shock as I gazed upon my reflection in the crystal clear pool, and it terrified him. Oh holy shit, how bad it must be. Dector spoke the truth, through some miracle the minstrel still lives. Our orders are to kill him and return with his head. If we fail, Dector will sever ours. 
Stunned and horrified by the hideous sight that once was his face, women dreamed of, and unaware of the impending danger behind me, I fled back to Soren's cave. I have seen the nightmare with my own eyes. Nothing remained of my mouth, my chin, my entire lower jaw. In that moment, I wished myself dead. And shortly thereafter, he's entered the cave of Soran the Sorceress. Dare we follow him? We must. I would rather face witchcraft than the Sword of Dektor. The fates are with us. He's sound asleep, no doubt exhausted from his run through the forest. Shh, be silent. We must slay him before he becomes aware of our presence. Now quickly, strike, before it's... It's too late, we are discovered. Die in the name of Dektor. Strike again, you clumsy fool. He is unarmed, we cannot fail. Halt, cowards. How dare you attack an unarmed foe. O oh, spirits, let them remain frozen where they stand until such a time as fair and equal combat can be arranged. So you have removed the bandages yourself. Not that it matters, for I intended to remove them as soon as I returned with the forager. You need not fear him. He is my friend, and therefore yours as well. From the way you cover your face, I assume you have already viewed your scars. But even they can be made at least tolerable. Show him, forager. There, I realize this will not make you as handsome as you once were. Still, this jaw forged from iron will allow you to speak again. And free your hands to wield a sword rather than cover your face in shame. Here, sip this potion I've prepared. It will spare you the pain to come. For iron pins must be driven into your upper jaw to support the new lower one. So merely drink this in sleep and I promise you when you awake... You once more will be the man who need never hide his face again. And there it is. It's on him now. He's become Iron Jaw. Though petrified with fright, I did as the sorceress asked. Then, when finally my eyes opened once more. Ah, the potion is wearing off. You are regaining your senses. Good. There is much for us to do. In so little time, quickly now, when your vision clears, attempt to speak to me. That's it. Feel the iron jaw. Become accustomed to it, for it has been permanently forged to your own existing bone structure. Then when you are able to open your mouth and utter my name, Soran. 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 The spirits be praised. My prayers have been answered. Truly you have worked some sort of miracle, but I will wait to show my thanks. For now there is only hatred in my heart. I thirst for revenge and I will start with these two. Release them from your spell that I may send their heads to Dektor. As you wish, while I prayed for your recovery, I ask also that you be given strength and a bold heart. Now I see that the spirits have granted those requests. Take this sword, let it draw your first blood in combat. What has happened? Who are you, warrior with a jaw of iron? Why do you attack us? Because you are loathsome cowards who would have murdered me in cold blood if fate had not intervened. For that reason now, I'll perish at the tip of my blade. Die, traitorous dog in the name of Tarlac. Minstrel, the other one escapes. Let him. It fits well into my scheme of things. Let him go back to Dektor and report that I, the minstrel, live. Then he who left me for dead will be forced to search me out, and when he finds me, I will be ready. You have done me a great honor, Mistral. You have filled my, ver uh, my every expectation. But before you battle Dektor, there is much for you to learn. For you are a singer, not a warrior. And at this time, you are no match for him. Not his equal, you say? Did I not, before your very eyes, cleave one of Dektor's men? Yes, but only with my help. It was my sorcery that guided your hand. Without that, they most surely would have vanquished you. But do not despair. For I know one who will teach you the ways of the warrior, if you allow me to take you to him. I beg of you, I have brought you this far, from the brink of death back to the dawn of life. Please trust me one step further, and in the end, this country, any country, will be ours for the taking. I love you, men. No! Iron Jaw! For that is the name men will call you. Perhaps it should have ended there. I was alive, I could at least speak once more, but it was not enough. Not then and not now. 
I craved vengeance, and since Soran seemed my only path towards it, I went with her. Next, the sword and the sorceress. Which, no, it's not going to be next. It's never going to happen. I apologize humbly because this is the end of the saga of Iron Jaw. Of course, based on what we know of the Iron Jaw timeline, we do know that he was in fact trained. He was trained and he did get revenge and he went on to become a king. So we at least know that. I'm not as mad about this ending as I am with the other ones. This one ended in a pretty decent spot. We got to understand more about the great machine and how it works. We got to see how he got his iron jaw. It's good stuff. I like it. Mwah, chef's kiss. But <sighs> we got to move on. Iron jaw was beautiful, but we got to move on. So that's it for this one. If you liked reading this comic with me and you want to read more comics with me, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and donate to my Patreon so that I can do more. Um, and that's it. Goodbye, Iron Jaw. Until next time, nerds, stay heroic.